Let's do trig for a second. Let's finish off the trig. How's our timing? Oh, not bad. Not bad. Let's do a little bit of trig so we deal with that. Okay. Here, take a look at trig. Here's three pins. Let me do this. Let me bring out the thing so I got the thing set up properly. So let's assume we have this, right? Here's a triangle, okay? Triangle means a polygon with three different angles, right? Closed polygon. So just imagine if we had this triangle, right? Now I'm going to <laughs> try not to show the logos and stuff, but they got the logo all over this thing, right? Uh, I wish I had pens here or drumsticks here that I've done with before, right? So take a look at this. If I decrease this angle here, right? Which side is getting smaller? It's this side, right? If I decrease this angle here, this side is getting smaller. I will search if I have an example that expresses what I mean. Okay, awesome. That'd be great. So the way it works is this. With a triangle, an angle controls the opposite side of a triangle. So this angle, if I draw this triangle, check this out. If I draw this triangle, this angle controls that side. This angle controls that side and that angle controls that side. Okay. Straight up triangle, right? So if you know this, just from this principle, I could give you a triangle and ask you if the triangle is a legitimate triangle. So for example, if I give you this triangle, I say this is uh, 50 degrees, this is 40 degrees, and this is 90 degrees, okay? And one of the other things, here's a properties of a triangle, sum of angles, in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees okay the sum of the angles in a triangle on Euclidean geometry which is flat surface geometry has to equal 180 degrees so if I draw any triangle here's a whole bunch of triangles All right This plus this plus this is 180. This plus this plus this is 180. That plus that plus plus is 180. That plus that plus is 180. 180. 180. 180. 180. Some of the angles in a triangle have to equal 180 degrees. Period. Done. Right? Now, take a look at this. So I drew a triangle here for you. And the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Right? And then I gave you sides for the angles. I said this is 6, this is 5, this is 9. Okay. The principle we have is this. An angle controls the opposite side, right? So this angle controls that side, that angle controls that side, that angle controls this side, the whole side, right? I could ask you a question. Is this triangle a legitimate triangle? Could it be a legitimate triangle? And the answer, obviously I gave you one that isn't, so I could prove a point, right? This triangle is not a legitimate triangle. And here's the reason why, right? Sign law, sign law. Here's the reason why, right? If an angle controls the opposite side, so this angle, this angle controls this side, right? So over here, this angle controls this side, which is the five. This angle controls this side, which is the 6. And this angle controls this side, which is the 9. Now, the biggest angle is 90 degrees, and that's across from the largest side. That's legit. And then we've got the smallest angle is across from the side that's 6. And the mid-size angle, the one that's between 90 and 40, is 50 degrees, controlling 5. This cannot be a legitimate triangle because if this is the smallest angle and if it controls the opposite side, this has to be the smallest side, right? So if I made this one a five and this one a six, and I ask you if this triangle was a legitimate triangle, you would say could be a legitimate triangle. 
The other one was absolutely not a legitimate triangle. Okay? Illegitimate triangle out of here. Right? Is it legitimate? This one could be legitimate now. Right? So keeping that in mind, which is an angle controls the opposite side, right? I'm gonna erase this guy as well. If I give you a right angle triangle, all of a sudden we have three other equations that pop up here, right? Another equation we have is for a right angle triangle, actually we've got four equations, but we'll do them one at a time, right? So this is our first property of a triangle. This is any triangle. The sum of the angles in a triangle have to equal 180 degrees, right? If I call this beta, yeah, let's not call it beta because people might get confused with that. Let's call it alpha. Uh, let's call it, no, we don't want to call it alpha. Uh, I guess we could call it alpha. Should we call it alpha? Let's call this W and let's call that Z. Just simplify things so we don't have any problems, right? So if I give you this triangle, it's a right angle triangle. Now for right angle triangles, you have the following four equations you can use. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, okay? And that's straight up Pythagorean theorem, which says for any right angle triangle, the two legs of the triangle squared added up equal to the third leg squared, right? It's pretty common to pair A and alpha, B with beta. Yeah, I put that one theta. <laughs> no. <laughs> C with gamma. C with goes with gamma? Racer kill? By the way, hi, racer kill. I didn't realize C with, with gamma, but we're just gonna call it W and Z. It doesn't make a difference, right? The beta I should have put here. That should be alpha and then beta and then gamma. What's the symbol for gamma? Gamma is this? I forget. Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if I give you any right angle triangle, as long as you have, or angle C, opposite of C. Yeah, you know what? Let's call it that here. We'll do this. We'll keep it, and I really dislike the convention they use, by the way. I don't, personally, it's not my favorite, but basically what they do, they say the capital letters are the angles, and the small case letters are the sides, right? Yeah, that's what they do. Here, I'll make the C a little bit smaller so it shows as a small C, right? Now, when it comes to this situation, and by the way, for any triangle, if you have three of the pieces of information, because there's six unknowns in a triangle, there's three angles and three sides, right? If you have three of the bits of information, one of them has to be a side, you can find everything else. I think small and capital is good, but it's annoying uh, for letters like C. It's very annoying for letters like C. Very annoying because C looks just like C except for size except for size. I don't like it personally, but it's really it's the convention that For some reason it's been being used for the last 15 years or so, which is weird, right? So if I give you any right angle triangle or any triangle really and if I give you that one two five X W Z and if I ask you to find this, you can do it. If I give you this triangle, right angle triangle, and I say five, seven, two, I didn't give you any angles except for the 90, oh, I don't need to even give you that one. Oh, that's the same as that one. Uh, da, 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 da. Do I wanna give you that one? Um, actually, this doesn't even have to be right angle triangles. You could figure that one out, right? But if I give you this, here, Let's call this 50 degrees, and that's 90. You could figure out that stuff. If I give you, here, kill that. If I give you this, you can figure out the rest. But if I give you this, uh, 40, if the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180, then 180 minus 90, because that's 90, is 90, minus 40, it makes this 50. If I give you this three, you can't figure out this triangle because you don't have, um, the scale, right? You don't have a distance. You don't have a length, okay? So as long as there's six bits of information in a triangle, three sides and three angles, 
As long as you have three of them, one of them being a side, you can figure out all the rest, right? So for a right angle triangle, Pythagorean theorem says this, the legs of the triangle, and the legs are the ones that connect up to give you the 90 degrees. The legs of the triangle, each one squared out of together is the hypotenuse squared. The other three angles get triangles up to scale, so you know the ratio. Yeah, you know the ratio. That's it. Ratio kill, thank you for the clarification. So check this out. If I give you a triangle, if I say this is 30 degrees, if that's 40 degrees, 30 and 40 is 70 degrees, right? Subtract that from 180, so this would have to be 110 degrees, right? If we have this triangle, the ratios of the sides, we know, right? Because no matter how small or how big this is, the ratios side A, B, and C, A over B will always be the same. Here's another one and if I said this is the same angles 30 40 and 110 degrees and this is X Y Z then a over B has to equal to X over Y Z over Y has to equal C over B right so proportions matter as well and they come in very very handy okay Triangles have very, they got some pretty cool features to them. They got pretty cool features to them. Here's the trigonometry aspect of the formulas, right? Sine theta, which is basically they give you the sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent okay now what does this mean this means the following the theta is the angle where you're at and relative to the angle that's what the opposite and the hypotenuse and the adjacent are going to be the hypotenuse is always across from 90 degrees right so if the theta is here then sine of B, sine of B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite from B is B over the hypotenuse is C. Cos of B is equal to, you put yourself, whenever they're giving you an angle, just imagine yourself putting yourself there and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that would be A over C because that's the adjacent over C. Now, if you put yourself here, this C, the hypotenuse, is also adjacent to B, which is a little confusing when you, they call it adjacent over hypotenuse. C is also adjacent to B, but C already has a name. It's called the hypotenuse. So you don't refer to that as the adjacent or the opposite. That's always the hypotenuse. I still don't like this there being 360 total degrees it feels like a product of the uh, imperial system it, it's uh, you mean for a full circle 360 degrees it's based on the Sun it's based on uh, I looked into this a while ago someone asked this question before and we looked into it and there was a reason for it uh, which was a pretty legit reason uh, I forget what it was is it based on the Sun so cos of B is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse A over C. Tan of B, tan of B is going to be opposite over adjacent. So you put yourself at B and you go opposite B over A. B over A. On the same note, one reason is that it's highly divisible. Yeah. Would you rather it be? 2 pi, <laughs> it is radians, 2 pi radians, right? And 2 pi comes in way more handy than 360 degrees, right? Like radians is way better than degrees. But degrees, because we've been taught forever, we just relate to degrees better, right? For in grade 12, they change it up to, or grade 11, if you're lucky, you get a teacher, 
they introduce pi and all of a sudden you're like what yeah the old mathematicians looked at the sun and figured that the sun took approximately 360 days around us is that what it was the simple as that damn that's a stupid reason to make a circle 360 degrees but i guess at the time it worked you didn't have calculator you got to keep in mind you didn't have calculators way back then right so you had to simplify things as best as you could the more you know the more you know the more you realize how ridiculous our world is right let's say we wanted to find sine cos and tan of angle a so if you go sine of a sine of a sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse so what you do is you put yourself on a oops you put yourself at a and you go what's opposite from a from here the opposite is here and the hypotenuse is here so sine of a is a over c cos of a oops cos of a is b over c and tan of a is a over b now take a look at this a over c where else do we have a over c a over c so what that tells us is cos of b is equal to sine of a right these are sort of properties that pop up Livia, how are you doing welcome welcome to the last stream mathematics right b over c oh b over c so sine of b is also equal to cos of a right this is some stuff that we delved into during our trigonometry playlist right uh where we're dealing with more how they're related to circles and whatnot right so this is what sokotoa represents and the best way to learn is to do a problem so let's do a problem that way you'll see or a couple of problems you'll see how this plays out with real numbers right um, oh i erased the 10 no i didn't erase the 10 cool so let's assume we had the following triangle and we wanted to find we wanted to solve the triangle whenever they say solve a triangle they mean find all six properties of that triangle okay so here's question one and we're only going to deal with right angle triangles okay so i've given you a right angle triangle let's assume i make this a 10 and i make this 60 degrees okay i want you to find x y and z okay perfect timing i'm covering exactly the same topic now awesome Lydia. i hope it helps here's an example right so what they would say for this they would say solve the triangle solve this triangle okay apologies about my writing it's, i write like a scribbly right so my question to you is and whenever you're doing these types of problems you should ask yourself what do you want to solve for first right now we have choices we could solve for any of these first right sometimes you don't have a choice sometimes you have to solve for one before you can move on to the other two okay but right now ask yourself which one do we want to solve for first okay have you figured it out do you know <laughs> a bust out calculator i've actually made it 60 degrees because that's a special triangle we know the ratios we can actually do this without a calculator okay it's easy z z very good right a alley cat because that's the easiest one to figure out why is it the easiest one to figure out because we have five formulas right that we use for right angle triangles two three four five right well four formulas that only work for right angle triangles and one formula that works for all triangles right the first formula says the sum of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees doesn't make a difference what type of triangle you have as long as it's on flat surface triangle you can figure it out 
it follows this principle right so some of the angles this angle plus that angle plus that angle has to equal 180 degrees now a lot of people do this they always add because this is a right angle that's 90 degrees they always add 90 degrees to 60 degrees and then subtract from 180. if you know this is 90 degrees 180 degrees minus 90 is 90. so whenever you have a right angle triangle if it's a right angle triangle the sum of the other two angles has to equal 90 degrees so you don't have to add this to this and then subtract from 180. you just have to go oh if this is a 90 degree triangle then this plus this has to equal 90. so 90 minus 60 z is 30. right so we figured out z this is 30 degrees that was easy okay now we have a choice we had a choice before but because we only got two sides left our choice is do we want to solve for x first or y first which one do we want to solve first x or y x or y what should we solve first difficult choice should we choose one let's start out with the lowest alphabet right x let's solve for x first so if you're going to solve for x first opposite opposite which one here's the key right if you're going to solve for x you have all three angles right so z was 30 let me put this here so we know it's this angle here it's not sitting out in the middle of the triangle 30 degrees right x is easier if you know sine of 30 yeah y is the same it's going to be the same right but let's assume we want to solve for x that's your first question the decision or your first dilemma which one do you want to solve for first or which one can you solve for first and then when you figure out it's x you want to solve for you're going to ask yourself do i want to use 60 degrees or do i want to use 30 degrees because you can use both of them right now okay if you're going to use 30 degrees you ask yourself what's x what's the position of x it will be half it won't be half what's the position of x relative to 30 well x is opposite from 30. so once you decide you want to solve for this and then you decide you want to use 30 degrees take your pen and go i'm at 30 degrees and i'm going to solve for x so what's the position of x relative to 30 that's opposite and what length do i have right now well i have the hypotenuse so i'm looking for something that has opposite and hypotenuse if i'm going to use 30. opposite of hypotenuse is sine so this would be sine of 30 degrees is equal to opposite opposite x over 10. okay and if you cross multiply like looking at the horizon like looking at the horizon you cross multiply this up so x is equal to 10 sine of 30 and sine of 30 is a special triangle 30 60 90 1 square to 3 2 sine of 30 is 1 over 2. so this would be 10 times 1 over 2. you can punch in your calculator if you want which is 5. So you just figured this out that's five okay now keep in mind you could have used 60 degrees to find x here i'll keep that one up the special triangle yeah special triangle is just a ratio it's a set ratio it works right we talk a lot about this in the trick playlist if this is 30 degrees that's 60 degrees that's 90. the ratios of the size are these so let's assume we're not going to use the 30 degrees we're going to try to find let's assume we haven't found this yet we want to find x but we're going to use 60 degrees to find x and personally i usually always use the information they've given me instead of the information i've calculated to do the next calculation just in case i made a mistake calculating this then the mistake doesn't carry over to the next problem right to the next unknown you need to solve for so if i want to solve for x 
I'm going to use the 60 degree angle. So I'm going to put myself at 60 degrees, right? And I'm going to say, okay, what side do I have? Well, we have the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for, it's going to be one of these guys because they both have hypotenuse in them. It's not going to be 10 because it doesn't have hypotenuse. So I have the hypotenuse and what's X relative to 60? It's the adjacent relative to 60. So I have to use cosine. So this becomes cos of 60 degrees is equal to adjacent, adjacent x over 10. Cross multiply x is 10 cosine of 60. Okay, what's cosine of 60? You put it here, cosine of 60 is adjacent or hypotenuse, 1 over 2. So this becomes 10 times 1 over 2, which is equal to 5. This is equal to 5, right? And you notice cosine of 60 is the same thing as sine of 30 right these are properties that show up cool i hope that's okay i talk like mad in this stream craziness craziness fun stuff though and trigonometry is ridiculously important it's really ridiculously important once you know how to solve use sokotoa the pythagorean theorem and the sum of the angles 180 degrees uh, two months of grade eight and nine, you'll ace, okay? And you're set up for math 11 and math 12, and you begin to have a way better appreciation for what all of this stuff means, and it's ratios, okay? Let me have thumbs up. It's ratios of one side relative to another side. Let me explain to you what that means, okay? I'm going to erase these. And if you do need the stuff, you can definitely, on the video, we're going to load it on YouTube and it will be available on Twitch, I think, for a couple of weeks. You can definitely take screenshots of it. If you learn basics of this, it's so easy to solve all problems. Yeah, basically a lot of problems. All right? So take a look at this. I'm going to erase these guys now. 